as the U.S. passed a grim new coronavirus milestone and Texas continued to dig itself out of an unprecedented power crisis, Fox News and the Republican Party were lasered focused on two things, lying about the Green New Deal and the 2020 election. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. It's been this way for a long time, but right now in particular, if you look around, it's easy to feel like virtually everything in our country is broken. The past year has been one of ceaseless misery, dysfunction, and chaos. And yes, I know I'm starting to sound like Werner Herzog at the top of one of these segments. Time is an unforgiving mistress. She will lure you in with her siren song, her beauty disguising her unquenchable thirst the misery and death. Werner, you're scaring Baby Yoda. Oh, sorry, I thought this was a man turtle puppet. <laughs> Yesterday, we passed the horrific milestone of half a million COVID deaths. Poverty and child hunger are on the rise. Millions have lost their health insurance. Grocery stores in Texas are barren. And Texans had to sit in their cars or start fires outside just to keep warm. If you have a platform of any kind, you could spend any time at all talking about any of those things, things that matter to real people's lives, or you could talk about whatever the hell this is. Did you see the dog? Let's get, I want to show you something I noticed. Doesn't he look a little, uh, little rough? <laughs> I love dogs, but this dog needs a, a bath and a comb and uh, all kinds of love and care. I've never seen a dog in the White House uh, like this. This dog looks like from, I'm sorry, from the junkyard. And I love that dog, but he looks like he's not been well cared for. No, not, not <laughs> at all. He looks very dirty and disheveled and, uh, very unlike a presidential dog like uh, Millie or Victory or something else in the past in the, uh, pre in the White House. Is the Max in Newsmax supposed to be ironic? Like they definitely can't be maxing out on news if they're talking about Joe Biden's dog. Also, how out of touch do you have to be to think it's a good idea to talk smack about dogs? You know who else can go straight to hell? Paul Rudd. You know you're desperate when the best attack you can come up with on a president is claiming he's got a janky dog. First of all, there's nothing wrong with that dog. He looks great. That's how a Biden dog should look. Joe Biden was never going to have a prized Pomeranian named after a Jane Austen character. God damn it, Mr. Willoughby, sit still while I file your nails. That dog looks like he'd be up at six, shoveling the driveway, and then packing his milk bones into a metal lunchbox and heading to the mill. Just by looking at that dog, you can picture how they met. Joe went into a local shelter, either to use the restroom or the payphone to call Jill and tell her he got kicked off the quiet car again, and he Heard a whimpering from a cage in the corner, walked over and said, hey, buddy, you remind me of me. You're not the best looking mutton here, but you have a heart. People always count you out, but today I'm counting you in to the Biden family. And the dog was like, can we go now? And are you always going to be this long-winded? Second, is there anything more pathetic than a bunch of old puds calling a dog ugly? Andy Samberg. <laughs> Instead of a set, Newsmax should just shoot their show on the porch of an old-timey drugstore. The only thing uglier than her disposition is her bloodhound. So that's a sample of what the right-wing media was spending time on amid a series of urgent national crises, exposing the potential for even more disaster down the road. As the New York Times put it, the week's continent-spanning winter storms triggered blackouts in Texas, Oklahoma, Mississippi, and several other states. One-third of oil production in the nation was halted. Drinking water systems in Ohio were knocked offline. Road networks nationwide were paralyzed and vaccination efforts in 20 states were disrupted. Man, the U.S. is starting to feel like a sci-fi dystopia where Tilda Swinton plays a blind oracle who knows the location of the last remaining life crystal. I was leaning towards making a Mad Max joke there, but I didn't want to get any more pronunciation notes from Australians. Uh, it's actually pronounced mood mooks. Good effort, though. Good on you for trying. Couldn't be blamed for reading that New York Times passage and thinking it was describing some failed Soviet state you never heard of. All we're missing is a reclusive president for life who wears designer scarves and surrounds himself with virgin guards. Although we got pretty close. Trump did have Rudy, who only ever got to third base with his cousin. Sorry, it's true. He married his cousin. And I never want to pass up the chance to remind you that the former president's lawyer thought Ancestry.com was a dating site. And I know some Rudy defenders will say, it was his second cousin. And my response to that is, okay. But this is very much an American problem. The problem is unfettered capitalism. Texas is the only state in the continental U.S. with its own power grid in order to avoid federal regulation, and the state and local governments have had trouble getting people food or safe drinking water, in some cases running out of supplies. And by their own admission, that's because they deferred so much of their preparation for crises like this to the private sector. Bluntly, 
we have very limited supply at the local government level of cities that just have warehouses full of bottled water that are owned by the city or that have meals ready to eat that are owned by the local government. They usually don't exist. We rely on the private sector for our everyday needs. Oh, yes, the private sector, the same people who brought you the Zune, Spirit Airlines, and Jared Leto's Joker. You know, if I could put Bernie in charge of one non-political thing, it would be that. We have too many jokers. All you need is one joker that's more than enough jokes. Or everyone gets their own joker. One or the other. So by their own admission, they rely on the private sector for their everyday needs. And I'm sorry, but I'm not sure we should get our food and water during crisis from the same people who spent a week in their pants when a bunch of Redditors drove up the stock price of a video game store. If you could wreak havoc on the markets by telling your internet buds to buy stock in Blockbuster as a goof, maybe don't put those same markets in charge of, I don't know, electricity? The private sector can't be trusted to provide everyone with the basic material needs to survive. I mean, we still have 30 million people without health insurance, but don't worry, the private sector has come up with 7,000 different flavors of e-juice. Texas intentionally walled off its power grid from regulation. In fact, they basically admitted they'd rather have a deregulated energy market run entirely by powerful corporate interests, even if that means suffering through lethal storms without power, water, and heat. Former Texas Governor Rick Perry says the Texans should be willing to go days without electricity, a sacrifice they should make, he says, to keep federal regulators out of the state power grid. I don't live in Texas, but something tells me you don't speak for everyone there, Rick Perry. I mean, he's like the guy at the frat party who thinks everyone's got his back when he stands up to the cops. We'd all rather go to jail than shut down this party, coppers. Right, guys? Guys, why are the lights on? Why are you turning? Kyle, are you draining the jello pool? I spent all day making that jello, Kyle. In their quiet moments, they're honest about it. They'd rather keep oil and gas deregulated in order to serve the interests of their powerful corporate patrons in the private sector at the expense of actual Texans who desperately need and deserve help. But like Clockwork, the Fox News disinformation machine, went to work and blamed the power outage in Texas on a thing that does not currently exist in any form in Texas or at the national level, the Green New Deal. Many are now blaming, believe it or not, renewable green energy. Wind turbines in the Lone State, Lone Star State are freezing. This shows how the Green New Deal would be a deadly deal for the United States of America. Joe Biden and Democrats better think twice about unleashing the Green New Deal on the whole country. This is all more proof that green energy just is not ready for prime time. These wind farms that are frozen, they're an eyesore, they're not efficient. I mean, the bottom line is you had windmills that froze. We have windmills because of concepts and policies that come from the Green New Deal. The lesson is we cannot go down this road, Laura, of green energy. Unbeknownst to most people, the Green New Deal came to Texas. The power grid in the state became totally reliant on windmills. How would you like a massive power plant in your backyard, humming and buzzing and chopping up birds? That's what a wind turbine is. How would you like a windmill in your backyard making noise, chopping up birds and sucking up all your air? How would you like a windmill to move in with you and live with you in your house, eating all your food and drinking all your booze? How would you like that windmill to get suspiciously close with your wife to the point where they start going on shopping trips together without you, leaving you at home wondering what they're doing together at the outlet mall while you look out the window at all the chopped up birds on your lawn. And how would you like to come home to find your wife's car in the driveway, but when you come inside, you don't see her. So you walk upstairs to the bedroom and before you open the door, the only noise you hear is whoom, whoom, whoom. <laughs> My wife left me for a windmill and it will happen to you too. Of course, it won't surprise you to learn that this lie is aggressively mendacious and dumb. About 80% of the grid's capacity this time of year was forecasted to come from natural gas, coal, and some nuclear power, which, of course it does. It's Texas. They used to have a football team called the Houston Oilers, not the Houston Solar Panels. And I'm sorry that I have to say this because it's, you know, insanely obvious. Because the New Deal, the Green New Deal, is not a thing that exists in Texas or at the national level. I mean, this is like blaming your problems on Avatar 2. It's not out yet. The real problem is that natural gas lines and instruments were frozen by the severe winter weather, in part because they weren't properly winterized. The state of Texas has left it to power operators to decide to invest in winterizing their equipment, and many of Texas power generators have not made the investments necessary to prevent disruptions. Meanwhile, only 7% of Texas's forecasted winter capacity was expected to come from various wind power sources across the state. Kind of like how you can only believe about 7% of what you see on Fox News. I mean, seriously, can you imagine how insane you have to be to blame windmills and the Green New Deal for a power outage in Texas? 
That's like blaming Boston clam chowder for the smell in New Jersey. It's not fair. They have their own reasons for that smell. They didn't have to go out of state. These guys really expect us to believe AOC snuck into the Houston oil fields in the middle of the night and replaced all the derricks with vegan food trucks. I mean, just think about that. Millions of Texans were left without food, water, heat and electricity in lethal temperatures for days in a state that is known the world over as the U.S. epicenter of oil and gas production. And not only that, the people who did manage to keep the lights on were stuck with devastating electric bills thanks to surge pricing imposed by the private sector Rick Perry cares so much about. A 63-year-old Army veteran who lives on Social Security payments in a Dallas suburb was charged over $16,000. I mean, that's horrifying. The only people who should ever get an electric bill that's even half that much are those people with massive Christmas displays synced up to Trans-Siberian Orchestra. So not only did the power go out in the epicenter of gas and oil production in the country, but the people who were lucky enough to keep their power had to drain their savings to afford it. If that doesn't tell you our country is broken, then I don't know what will. The fact alone should prompt some serious introspection. It's like if a Tom Cruise movie bombed. That should never happen. It would be a national disgrace. It would be on the front page of every newspaper. The number one trend on Twitter would be hashtag Tom Snooze. And Congress would hold emergency hearings to find out how he got dragged into making Top Gun 3 Goose's Goose now. <laughs> I mean, I would not see it. <laughs> anyway, the point is, it's a nightmare. And Texas desperately needs and deserves our immediate help right now. It's also a cautionary tale about climate change and emergency management, deregulation, and over-reliance on the private sector and fossil fuels, as well as a warning about our crumbling infrastructure and the criminal neglect of our political class, which has failed to ensure the basic needs of every American are met, as evidenced in part by one of the state's senators fleeing to Cancun as his constituents froze in their homes. <laughs> Yikes. This is the most depressing airport photo I've ever seen that wasn't taken at LaGuardia. In fact, Ted Cruz is the LaGuardia of people. With that beard, he looks like an out-of-work osprey, too lazy to fly south for the winter. He looks like Pavarotti walked through a car wash. Then once he was shamed into coming back, Cruz tried to pretend he was actually interested in helping out. On Saturday, he posted photos of himself handing out bottled water with the hashtag Texas Strong. Sure, dude. We totally believe you. Ted Cruz is the husband who sits on his couch watching football all day, then sees his wife unloading a car full of groceries, waits until there's one bag left in the trunk, then goes outside and says, oh, uh, can I help? Oh, <laughs> lucky for me, just a paper towel bag. Honey? Honey? Whom? 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 Oh, Tucker. You weren't lying. The problems we're facing as a nation right now are structural. They require radical solutions and they demand that we face reality and tell the truth. And yet one of our two major political parties is continuing to plunge deeper into an alternate universe of delusion and disinformation. I mean, just consider the fact that Donald Trump is no longer in office. He no longer holds any real power over elected Republican officials. He's the most unpopular president in the history of polling with a track record of abysmal failure. And yet high ranking Republicans still refuse to say the obvious which is that he legitimately lost the 2020 election. Clear this up for me. Joe Biden won the election. He is the legitimate president of the United States. The election was not stolen, correct? Uh, look, Joe Biden's the president. Uh, there were a few states that did not follow their state laws. That's really the dispute that you've seen continue on. But, but Congressman, I know Joe Biden's the president. He lives at the White House. Uh, I asked you, is yeah. he the legitimate president of the United States, and do you concede that this election was not stolen? Very simple question. Please yeah, look, just answer yeah, look, it. Once, once, the elect, once the electors are counted, yes, he's the legitimate president. Uh, but uh, if you're going to ignore the fact that there were states that did not follow their own state legislatively set laws, that's the issue at heart that millions of people still are not happy with. First of all, that's not true. Second, why are we still inviting these lunatics on national TV? They should be a basic litmus test. If you can't trust them to be honest about something as simple as who won the election, how can you expect them to be honest about anything else? If my doctor walked into the exam room with a copy of the Weekly World News tucked under his arm and said, more bad news about Bat Boy, apparently he's the Pope's secret love child, I wouldn't necessarily trust what he had to say about my rash. And I need to get some feedback on the rash. Scalise is the latest high-profile Republican to fly to Mar-a-Lago and curry favor with Trump. And in that same interview, Scalise refused to even admit that Trump bore responsibility for the insurrection on January 6th. When you met with uh, the former president, did you ask him to take responsibility? Did he take responsibility? 
Well, Jonathan, I was in uh, Florida doing some fundraising throughout a number of parts of Florida. I ended up at Mar-a-Lago, and the president reached out, and we visited. Wait, I'm sorry. How do you just end up at Mar-a-Lago? Same way you end up at a strip club? Honey, I didn't know where the guys were going. We were drinking Sprite and playing board games. The next thing you know, we ended up at the Diamond Donkey. I don't want to be there, babe. I want to be pounding Sprites, playing Risk. <laughs> These election lies are so insane that today, one of the chief disseminators of the big lie, Mike Lindell, a.k.a. the My Pillow Guy, got sued for defamation by Dominion Voting Systems for $1.3 billion. $1.3 billion! Right now, that dude's running around shaking the change out of every pillow in his house, which is no small amount of money, as my pillows are filled with nickels. If it's good enough for Thomas Jefferson, then it's good enough for yours. <laughs> I'm Mike Lindell, a.k.a. Mike Bill guy. <laughs> Can you imagine if that lawsuit succeeds? The company will have to change its name to Dominion Pillows Incorporated, and Lindell will just be a pillow guy. Also, side note, why do all these weirdos look like they haven't slept in 100 years? Ted Cruz looks like a used my pillow was struck by lightning and came to life. Did they all go to Cancun for 36 hours? I think I got drunk and slept with my cousin. Rudy, that was non-alcoholic beer. Oh, no. Oh, I maybe did it on purpose. You guys, she's my second cousin. Why do you think that makes it okay, Rudy? Why do you keep saying that like we're all going to say, like, oh, our bad. We all owe Rudy an apology. This week has demonstrated once again that we're facing a series of towering crises unprecedented in our lifetimes. They require bold action and truth-telling, and yet one of our two major political parties has become totally unmoored from reality. They're lying about everything from the election to the Green New Deal. And on top of that, they all look like they could use a bath and a comb and uh, all kinds of love and care. This has been A Closer Look. God's love, we deliver cooks and brings over two million meals a year to men, women, and children living with HIV, AIDS, cancer, and other serious illnesses, and they need your help now more than ever. If you're watching this online, you can hit the donate button. Stay safe, wash your hands, wear a mask. We love you.